Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Aviation weather across the West Coast is going to be diminishing on your Thursday morning. IFR to MVFR conditions will be widespread through the Alaska Peninsula up through the Bering Strait. We'll also see MVFR conditions across towards the eastern areas of the Gulf as well. Southeast and eastern areas of the state are going to be in VFR conditions during the morning hours and we'll see MVFR along the north coast. Now out across the western areas of the Bering expect widespread MVFR and IFR just north of the western Aleutian chain and during the afternoon hours MVFR conditions are going to spread further to the east um, covering the areas of the central Bering down through the central Aleutians. Now across the state, we'll see IFR conditions beginning to spread further to the east. Um, that's gonna be over the southern tip of the Kenai and Kodiak Island as well. Across the eastern areas, the Gulf and the southeast, we're still gonna be in the VFR conditions. And across the north coast, they're gonna be persisting with the MVFR conditions. However, as we get into Friday, expect IFR conditions to be moving into the north coast. MVFR will be widespread across the Brooks Range with IFR conditions covering uh, pretty much the eastern areas of the state. Also, as well as the eastern areas of the Gulf, look for IFR conditions across the central areas of the Aleutians with MVFR from uh, just east along the eastern Aleutians moving in there and towards the western Aleutians. As we head into the afternoon hours, we'll expect those IFR conditions to shift further towards the Alaska Peninsula and the Pribilof. So the Friday afternoon weather is going to be diminishing across the eastern and central areas of the Bering, while the Gulf is going to be seeing improvement to VFR conditions. The southeast, however, will be in the MVFR and IFR conditions during the afternoon, as well as the eastern border of the state. IFR conditions also along the eastern Alaska range there, and MVFR conditions fairly widespread across the northern tier of the state. Now let's take a look at your passes in more depth for tomorrow. Anatovic will be VFR and Attigan will also be a VFR. Looking at MVFR uh, diminishing to IFR for both Lake Clark and Merrill Pass and we'll see that trend at rainy MVFR to IFR and we'll see Windy Pass go from VFR to MVFR late day and for Isabel Pass we'll go VFR also to MVFR. Mentasta will go from VFR to MVFR and Tanita will also be uh, VFR all day tomorrow and Portage as well VFR and we'll see Chilkoot and White Pass in VFR all day. Now let's take a look and your freezing levels for tomorrow morning will extend from the northwest coast back towards the southeastern areas of the state with a 2,000 foot level increasing up to 8 to 10,000 feet as you head towards the west coast and the Alaska Peninsula. Now for the bearing we have a colder uh, air mass on the back side of this so 2,000 slowly rises to 4,000 across the eastern bearing. Now let's take a look at your icing concerns for tomorrow. We're mainly focused around the low pressure system there in the bearing with icing conditions across the, the west coast and into the northern areas of the bearing. So concerns uh, to the south are going to be above 10,000 feet and as you head towards the bearing strait conditions will be below 5,000 feet in that direction. Now we're not concerned about the eastern areas of the state for tomorrow for icing and let's take a look at the jet stream and this this is why because we have this ridging uh, pattern across the eastern areas of the Gulf there. Now this jet stream pattern has got a very strong flow out towards the western Aleutians at 140 knots amplified pattern across the state areas between 60 to 80 knots a strong northerly flow there on the eastern areas of the state. Now the low pressure system that's going to be bringing the stronger winds are, is going to be centered just to the west of St. Uh, Lawrence Island there with a strong jet blow it between 45 to 50 knots at 9,000 foot. 
Across the state, we're going to see winds primarily between 45 to 55 knots across the western areas of the state. The strongest winds are going to be across the Alaska Peninsula there. Now we see a change of flow out of the north across the southeast with a 35 knot flow. And this pattern here with the low pressure system is going to be very similar at 3,000 feet, looking at 45 to 55 knots. And then we'll see a change of direction around the low pressure system. And then across the eastern areas of the state, 15 to 30 knots. The southeast will be relatively light, so the conditions for turbulence are going to be mainly concerned across the western coast areas. And all across the Bering, look for conditions um, considerably moderate out in that direction. Now, in just a moment, we'll be back with your marine forecast. Hello and welcome to Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Kimberly Hepner, and today is October 11, 2017. In just a moment, we're going to be on to your public marine and aviation forecast. When we're not doing this live recording, you can always check our information out by going to weather.gov forward slash Alaska or call our information line at 1-800-472-0391. Now let's go and take a look at your hazards across the area. As we head into the end of the week, we are having a storm system that's going to bring some gusty winds and some coastal hazards all along the coast from Point Hope down to Hooper Bay. From Point Hope to Shishmaref, expect very gusty winds out of the southeast direction, 50 to 60 miles per hour developing overnight tonight and continuing through the early part of the day on Friday. Now also expect along these areas high surf, so we're expecting a uh, warning out for the coastal flood um, issues through uh, between 1 p.m. on Thursday through Friday at 4 p.m. Now these areas uh, can experience some flooding in, in the lower areas and also expect coastal inundation, uh, beach erosion issues as we head into the end of the week. Now let's take a look out to the west and you can see an area highlighted in red. This is for strong gusty winds that have already developed across the western Aleutian chain. We're expecting gusts in the, these areas up to 80 miles per hour and that warning is out through midnight tonight. Now let's take a look at the storm systems that are coming across the area. We do have a low pressure system that's developing in the western areas of the Bering and this system is going to be approaching the west coast as we head into the night tonight. Now taking a look over across the eastern areas of the Gulf, there is a break uh, across the eastern Gulf waters. So sunny skies across the southeast this afternoon with a lot of moisture heading in inland ahead of the low pressure system that's developing across the Bering. Now across the northern tier of the state, mainly just low, low clouds with a cooler air mass in there. We do have some patchy fog along the coast with some light snow occurring uh, during the afternoon hours just along the eastern Beaufort Sea Coast. There's the map across the southeast and the clearing skies through the panhandle. And across south central, the clouds are already moving out ahead of the low pressure system in the Bering. So the gustier winds are going to be out of the south direction, already gusting between 40 to 55 miles per hour. Expect the Alaska Peninsula uh, with the gustiest conditions at this point up through Nunavak Island. Light rain is occurring along the frontal boundary with heavier rain to the north across the Bering Strait. Some patchy fog conditions developed just inland along the west coast with some light rain beginning to develop, to, to develop across Bristol Bay and the Kuskokwim Delta. On the back side of this low pressure system, we do have some light rain that's making it all around the center of the 958 millibar low with a little bit of a drier air intrusion up through the central areas of the Bering. Now, as we head through the night, this front is going to push further into the coast with light rain and patchy fog expected along the boundary and those winds starting to ramp up across the Bering Strait. Now expect widespread rain showers around the low pressure system and off to south central, it's going to stay a little bit drier with some light snow and rain occurring just ahead of the frontal boundary across the Yukon and lower Yukon valleys. Now down into the western Alaska range, also some light rain is expected to develop. Maybe a few showers will be heading into the western areas of the Gulf. However, a uh, high um, pressure is going to be dominating the eastern areas of the state. Some patchy fog is expected to develop overnight and the southeast will remain under uh, cl relatively clear skies. Now as we head into the day on Thursday, expect your frontal boundary to be pushing 
across the central interior and this is going to be bring some widespread snow showers mainly from the Brooks Range and south across the eastern areas of the Copper River. Another clear day across the southeast and the west areas will be in rain as the front just passes towards Kodiak Island back towards just north of the Seward Peninsula. So snow up across the uh, northwest with patchy fog continuing along the northeast uh, Beaufort seacoast. Now strong gusty winds will be occurring all around this low pressure system with gusty winds across the bearing between 50 to 60 miles per hour and primarily out of the south to southeast directions ahead of this low pressure system. The Seward Peninsula will also be seeing those winds gusting up to 60 miles per hour. Now, as we head into Friday, expect some light snow to be occurring across the northern tier of the state. Uh, overall totals through the end of the week will be between two to five inches, mainly along the higher elevations on either side of the Richardson Highway. Now to the southeast, uh, we're expecting a front to be pushing across the area, bring some light rain back uh, by the end of the week here. And south central will be in the transitional phase of uh, Kenai will be a little bit on the drier side, weak ridging in between two low pressure systems. So primarily the snow will be across the interior down to the uh, down to the northeast Gulf Coast uh, transitioning there to rain. Now the west coast will be in a light showery pattern as upper level waves move around a low pressure system that stays embedded across the areas of the bearing. Now the western areas will stay under the strong westerly pattern as a new low pressure system develops in the southern areas of, of the um, bearing. Look for this front to be pushing slowly and towards the east. Now, let's take a look at your temperatures for Thursday. Across the northern coast, we're going to see some of the coldest temperatures this week, you know, dropping down into the 15 to 25 degree range. The coldest areas are going to be near the Arctic Valley area and down through Eagle. Uh, the Copper River will also be below the freezing mark, hence the um, snow that will be setting up later this week. Now, the west coast will be in a rainier pattern with temperatures holding in the mid 40s. Across the Aleutian chain, expect temperatures to range in the low to mid 40s. Across the Gulf waters, temperatures will range to the lower 30s into the mid 40s, with the coldest temperatures right there along the Copper River Delta. And back towards um, the southeast, expect temperatures a little bit cooler with those clear skies in the upper 30s. Now let's take a look at your Thursday afternoon. Looking at temperatures here, they will be climbing to near 50, mainly towards those southern areas. Across the eastern border of the state, cooler temperatures in the upper 30s. The northern tier of the state will warm up to freezing, and the west coast will have a little bit uh, warmer air mass there, bringing temperatures up to near 40 degrees. Looking at the west coast overall, uh, we're seeing temperatures climbing for Thursday afternoon in the upper 40s to near 50 with the bearing temperatures ranging from the upper 40s to uh, highs near 50. Now let's take a look at your temperatures as we head into Friday morning. Temperatures here will be dropping into the lower 40s across the bearing locations with cooler temperatures there as a cold air mass comes in along the Kuskokwim Delta. Take a look at the Gulf uh, locations and you can see temperatures will be on the downward trend through the Kenai Peninsula with Kenai getting down into the 38 degree range. So t uh, Kodiak will hold on to temperatures near uh, 45 degrees. Across the southeast another cool night as a uh, skies will stay relatively clear until that front moves in later on Friday. So expect uh, temperatures near uh, 38 degrees or slightly warmer to the southeast. Now for areas along the northern tier of the state, temperatures will range in the mid-20s uh, and down once again across the eastern border in the mid-teens. As we head into the afternoon on Friday, uh, not much of a warm-up across the eastern areas of the state, hanging into the 30-degree range or just above. Uh, for the eastern borders, locations will see temperatures a little bit cooler, ranging closer to the mid-30s as that front 
moves uh, over to the central areas of the state, the temperatures will be relatively uniform through the southwest in the mid 40s to upper 40s. Now across the Gulf waters, expect temperatures to range in the upper 40s to lower 50s, and temperatures will moderate across the western areas, the uh, Bering and central Bering will still see temperatures in the mid 40 to lower um, to lower 50 degree range closer to the eastern Aleutians there and maybe a slight increase across the Alaska Peninsula up to 50 degrees on that day. Now temperature trends overall are going to stay fairly even across the western areas of the state as we have a boundary that's going to be stalling there so temperatures will be fairly mild while temperatures will be on a cooling trend across eastern areas of the state and once again the southeast will see warm afternoons and cool over nights as uh, they stay under clear clear skies now in just a heading into your weekend the temperature trends are pretty much going to stay the same as the low pressure is going to be the dominant dominant pressure system in the bearing Welcome back to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder, joined once again by the science liaison of GINA, Eric Stevens. GINA, of course, is the Geographic Information Network of Alaska based up at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. And GINA is all about satellites, and Eric mm -hmm. is always here to tell some really cool stuff about satellites. Now, the last time you were here, we talked mm -hmm. about how the weather satellites can see clouds and what's under the clouds, but you're telling me that satellites can do a lot more, even protect the, uh, the general public uh, with uh, aviation safety information. That's right. There's one particular aspect of satellites we're going to mm -hmm. talk about today that might not be immediately obvious, and that is detecting things in the atmosphere mm -hmm. that are not clouds, that are not snow, not rain, huh. but rather a hazard that can happen here in Alaska, and that is volcanic ash. Ah, of course. When okay. a volcano goes off, puts ash in the air, this is of course a hazard to the public if the ash were to fall on the ground in, in accumulating amounts. Sure. Additionally, while the ash is in the air, and this is the more frequent hazard, is it's a hazard to aviation mm -hmm. because you cannot fly an airplane into volcanic ash without, without great risk. Worst case scenario, the ash gets into a jet engine, right. wrecks the engine, kills the engine, mm -hmm. and now you have an airplane flying with no engines. Right. It won't fly for long. So aviators need to avoid that ash how do you avoid the ash? You have to know where it is mm -hmm. by identifying it with a satellite image and perhaps predicting then where the ash will flow with the overall weather patterns. Satellites are so important for identifying when a volcano goes off mm -hmm. and then tracking the ash after the, the volcano injects the ash into the atmosphere. Now, are you talking about seeing the heat signature or a huge volcanic plume with a cloud that we're used to seeing in the really pretty pictures of, of any Alaska volcano that's erupted recently, Redoubt, for example? Or are mm -hmm. we talking about the really fine details? Because this well, is polar orbiting satellites, the ones that are very low to the ground, right? Mm -hmm. The, the geostationary satellites can do some detection. The polar orbiters, like you say, they're mm -hmm. closer to the Earth. They mm -hmm. give the even better view. In answer to your question, mm -hmm. I would say all of the above. Oh, okay. A heat cool. signature from a volcano going off with all the, the heat that comes um, with the eruption, that mm -hmm. can be identified in infrared imagery. Okay. We've got images from the Kamchatka Peninsula. That's, that's the far eastern part of Russia mm -hmm. on the western side of the Bering Sea, loaded with volcanoes. Right. You know, Alaska has plenty of volcanoes of its own. We can also be affected when a, a volcano goes off in Kamchatka, say, mm -hmm. and then the weather carries that ash toward Alaska from the west. Right. You can see the, the infrared heat signature, like you say. Okay. Also, um, the ash in the air can be detected by doing some sophisticated uh, channel differencing within the satellite data. You can find the, uh, the identification of sulfur dioxide, say, that's a component of the volcanic okay. emission, mm -hmm. and you can trace this um, with the satellite imagery. Um, sometimes volcanoes go off that haven't gone off before, mm -hmm. and we're not expecting them to go off. Say if there's no seismometers around a given volcano that hasn't gone off in 100 years, you might not be expecting it to go off. And the satellite imagery, since satellites can be uh -huh. globally comprehensive, that might be the first sign that you have that a volcano oh, wow. in an unexpected area is going off. So it's a good backup system, okay. Right, wow. right, and, and people are working all the time on automating the, uh, the interrogation of satellite data by computers mm -hmm. to provide a, a first alert to 
a human to, so the software will say, we think this might be important. Human, go take a closer look. Because right. the people are still the best way to, to interrogate the imagery, but the planet's a big place. Yes. And we can't be looking everywhere all the time. So the software helps give a first, first cut. And then in Alaska, there's a special kind of surprise angle where the satellites are helpful, and that is um, the Katmai eruption mm -hmm. of 1912. Um, huge eruption. There is still somewhat of a moonscape out there in southwest right. Alaska where all this ash is laying on the ground. Mm -hmm. And sometimes a, a strong weather pattern comes along where we have roaring northwest winds that go across the Alaska Peninsula there and can actually pick some of this ash up right. off the ground. No volcano is going off. This was more than 100 years ago that that volcano actually yeah. blew. So you're not going to see a heat signature like we were discussing. Mm -hmm. uh, there will be no seismic signature of a volcano going off. So those data sets, they'll say, oh, no right. problem. Mm -hmm. But you can see in some of the satellite imagery this ash, as it's called, resuspended. Right. When the, the wind comes along, picks it up, the ash can be lofted a few thousand feet in the air just okay. with the wind. And an airplane flying into that plume is, is exposed to some danger. So we need to track right. that ash to provide guidance to aviators that you don't want to be flying here at these elevations in this area. We've got some imagery of the resuspension. And you can mm -hmm. see the wind blowing strongly from the northwest, picking up the ash and, and blowing it down to the southeast. Right. And so that's another perhaps not immediately obvious hazard of volcanic ash. It, Katmai is the gift that keeps on giving <laughs> for sure. Very good. So we've got satellites that, that can help us understand the weather uh, from the past and the immediate past. And we talked last time about how that's feeding into the forecast modeling to help improve mm -hmm. predictions. But mm -hmm. now they're also protecting the general public with aviation sensitive information and watching volcanoes, whether they're erupting or maybe have erupted in the past and finding the, the left behinds from, from those uh, volcanic events there. So really impressive stuff. Mm -hmm. Eric, thanks so much for joining us again today. And uh, you're a gift that keeps on giving from the satellite community. So <laughs> thanks a lot. And we hope to have you back again soon. Again, Eric Stevens with Gina at the University of Alaska of Fairbanks. And if you'd like to check out any of the information that uh, Eric has shared with us again today, you can do that very easily by going to www.gina.alaska.edu. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder, and thanks for joining us for another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. And now, marine weather around Alaska. And now a quick check with your ice edge forecast. Uh, basically, we're going to remain in a steady pattern with some light icing basically along the eastern Beaufort Sea coast back through uh, Barrow. We're not going to see much change as we head through the next few days with the powerful storm system just sitting to the west. Now let's go on to your southeast forecast. Primarily, we're going to see a northerly flow between 10 to 20 knots. Uh, seas on this day are going to be between two to three feet across the inner channels and between seven to nine feet across the outer waters. Now take a look at your Friday forecast, a little bit change of wind direction here, gustier flow coming up the channels, gusting up to 35 knots, primarily between 20 to 25 knots, small craft advisories widespread across the area with some gales up there to the north with seas between 8 to 11 feet across the outer waters and seas across the inner channels will be between four to five feet. Now let's take a look at its south central locations. We're going to see winds on this on Thursday between 20 uh, to 25 miles um, knots across the western waters and across the northern gulf. Expect a southerly flow becoming more easterly across Prince William Sound. The Cook Inlet will have a northerly flow component. So change of wind directions across the area with the highest seas impacting uh, the western gulf between five to seven feet and the northern gulf waters, Cook Inlet and uh, Prince William Sound will be around two to three feet. Now let's take a look at your Friday forecast. Winds are going to be picking up on this day, gusting um, gale strength gusts across much of the Gulf. And we'll see uh, at least small crafts around the Kenai Peninsula out of the west direction, primarily becoming more southerly across the northern inlet, a northwesterly flow across Prince William Sound. Now the seas on this day for the inlet Prince William Sound area are going to be around three feet and then across the Gulf waters uh, higher seas between 9 to 13 feet and the southern inlet areas will be between 7 to 9 feet. Let's take a look at your Alaska Peninsula on Thursday. 
primarily a small craft advisory across the entire area, change of wind directions from south to southwest, becoming more southerly towards Kodiak Island. Seas on the Bering side are going to be between 8 to 12 feet and 14 to 15 feet across the Pacific side. Now, on your Friday, the speeds are going to be gusting a little bit stronger near Cold Bay on the Bering side, 35 knots um, is going to be gale criteria, and 20 to 30 knots across the rest of the area. Seas on this day between 9 to 15 ac across the Bering and 10 to 11 feet on the Pacific side. Now, the strongest winds and the highest waves are going to be along the Bering locations between 40 to 45 knots for your wind strength out to the west on Thursday and seas on this day on the Bering side are 20 to 27 feet. Pacific side is going to see seas between 14 to 20 feet so uh, for most locations expect gales and then on Friday we'll see even stronger winds yet across the central and eastern Aleutians with gusts up to 50 knots and then we'll see a, primarily a gale strength out to the west, 30 to 40 knots. On a seas, you're expecting between 14 to 20 feet across the Bering side, and then between 18 to 22 feet across the Pacific side. On your Thursday forecast for the west coast and central Bering, expect very strong winds here as well. We're gonna see between 30 to 45 knots across the area with seas on this day between 15 to 25 feet. The highest seas are gonna be out towards the central and northern areas of the Bering. And then on your Friday, expect very strong winds to continue. However, uh, mostly small craft to gale criteria on this day with um, a southerly flow component and seas on this day will be between 15 to 20 feet. And on your west coast and northwest coast, expect seas uh, to be increasing, especially for the west coast with stronger winds out of the east to south direction and we're gonna see gales all across the area, 30 to 45 knots. And then as we head into your Friday, still strong easterly component becoming more southerly through the Bering Strait there. Seas on this day also are gonna be even higher yet, between 12 to 20 feet along the coastal areas. The highest seas are gonna be affecting the northwest coast there. Now let's take a recap of your forecast. This low pressure system is a strong system and it's gonna be pushing the front inland. So rain is gonna be spreading inland and interior areas are gonna see snow between two to five inches, mainly across the central interior and north and the eastern Copper River. Now conditions across the southeast are going to be clear and then diminish on your Friday with rain coming back into the area. Thanks for staying with us. I've been Kimberly Hefner with Alaska State Weather. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.